on Saturday, September 5th, when they take on Charlotte. In fact, four of their first five games will be at home this year, as they will also take on Furman, Florida, and Missouri from the end of September to early October. The only road game in there is a Week 2 matchup at Oklahoma. Other home games include Alabama, Kentucky, and Troy, while they will go on the road in SEC play to South Carolina, Arkansas, Georgia, and also Vanderbilt. Moving to Atlanta Braves baseball, they defeat the Twins yesterday 11-7. Tonight, they open up a four-game series at Miami. The Jeep Wrangler is the 2019 Motor Trend SUV of the year. Great deals available now at the Jeep Summer Sales Event. I'm Matt Pauley with the Sports Flash on 1420 WEMB Sports Radio. I uh, am not going to have bumper music here. No, I'm not. Marky e. Bilson with you, Tri-City Sports Now, because I really, really feel it is very important that I tell you that multiplier and dollar do not rhyme. You have heard me in the past get on Kenny Loggins. Loose and shoes do not rhyme. You wonder... The sins of a previous generation, what impact it will have on modern youth. When you try to rhyme shoes and loose, you then try to rhyme multiplier and dollar. No. 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 And talk about whether or not the casino is going to come to Bristol and all that. There's an argument right there for the anti-casino people. Look, we cannot have more advertising like this. Think of rhyming. Think of competent rhyming. All right, you know. <laughs> see, that would get me. I, I, you know, that that would convince me if you could, you know, suggest to me that. You know, we will be able to rhyme proper, you know, you know, live a clean life and uh, you'll be able to write good poetry, you know, that sort of thing. I mean, it's just... yes, Marky e. Bilson, Tri-City Sports Now, or song lyric, what have you, you know, I mean. By the way, I was talking baseball, I was remiss in one story, uh, and this has uh, been that you've heard, uh, Let's see, are the Braves, and, you know, I mentioned how they keep winning. They took two out of three from the Twins. Now, of course, Nick Markakis and Dansby Swanson, and you, know, you heard, for instance, Albies picking up the slack with a couple of dingers in the 11-7 victory against the Twins, which follows a 12-7 victory against the Twins. But uh, Austin Riley went on the 10-day injured list uh, following last night's game, and they're testing his knee. Now, Austin Riley, you know, started off with a bang, of course. Uh, started hitting home runs left and right. Uh, but he was warming up uh, and suffered maybe a fluky injury before the ball game. Now, how good was his start? Uh, let's put it this way. He started off, became the first Braves player in 111 years, and the ninth Major League Baseball rookie did five home runs in the first nine games of his career. That's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. And then he was the fastest Brave ever to reach 10 home runs in his career. Hank Aaron, Eddie Matthews, Dale Murphy, you know, all those guys. Now, maybe, you know, there's been a little bit of fickleness. Because Riley's average went down to 242. 236 at-bats. Still has 17 bombs. You know, so, see how that goes. But, all right, I, I would think that even with that 242 average, I mean, you know, Talk about this, the modern-day ball player. And the modern-day ball player seems to want to put up a lot of stats like Dave Kingman. I um, you know, and, well, Kingman's 234 lifetime, but you get the idea here. Austin Riley at 242 with 17 bombs, 
That's very Adam Dunn. That's very Pedro Alvarez. That's very Bryce Harper at 249 last year. So, looking at that, and uh, yeah, I'll tell you something else on baseball front. I was going to go and talk a little basketball, and I've got some football story. In fact, I got a big football story coming out with the Wash Skins, as I will channel my inner Myron Cope, that's what he used to call them, the Wash Skin, Washington Redskins. He wasn't trying to be politically correct, he was just trying to be, well, sort of like writing for box scores. But um, the New York Yankees, I mentioned they are running away earlier. Uh, I mentioned this on the show with the American League East. Talked about, hmm, what World Series matchups would you like to see? Well, if you're a Braves fan, you like them in, and you don't care who they'll play. Maybe this game with the Twins, maybe this was a World Series preview, but I think if you ask the analytical baseball fan, if you ask you know, the majority, the guys that didn't have a dog in a hunt, Yankees-Dodgers. Hasn't happened since 81. There are those that'll say it really hasn't happened since 56. We call those people New Yorkers. However, Yankees really beaten up on the Orioles. I was going back, uh, you know, and just looking through some old records, not music, no, some old baseball records, okay? And really was surprised to see something. I looked up 1979, 40 years ago. And you want to talk about competitive balance? Now, I realize that probably some the teams in the American League East did get fat on the Toronto Blue Jays, but they only played them 13 times a year. Blue Jays were an expansion team. They were really bad. But there were six teams in the American League East in 1979 that had winning records. I believe that in the National League East, there were four. And the Chicago Cubs had a winning record with one week left to play in the season. And they only finished a couple under 500. And I mention those things because you talk about competitive balance. Yeah, there were some bad teams, don't get me wrong, a couple of expansion teams, and the Mariners and the Blue Jays that certainly the American League beat up on. But there were a lot of, if you can call a team with a winning record a good team, yeah, there were a lot of good teams in baseball then. I think that you now have elite teams and you have everybody else. And right now it seems like there are probably four elite teams. The Yankees, the Dodgers, the Astros, and yes, the Atlanta Braves who are winning despite the absence of now Riley and before that Swanson and Marquecas are really having any bullpen whatsoever. I mean, you know. So, I mentioned this, but who are the have-nots? I mean, I've joked, hey, you want to buy a house? I'll tell you how you do it. Bet against the Detroit Tigers. Bet on them to lose. Their winning percentage is atrocious. It's around 300 they could theoretically, if they get just a little worse, challenge Major League Baseball's record for most losses in the modern era, which is 120 by the 62 Mets. The 1899 Cleveland Spiders lost 134. That's a whole different story. However, I think the Tigers will not lose 100. I don't even think they mathematically can. I may be wrong about that, but anyway. The... Circumstance comes down to this, but there are a lot of bad teams. And the only reason why the Orioles don't have the worst record in baseball is because the Tigers do. And these are proud franchises. I mean, I traditionally don't think of the Orioles and the Tigers as losers. You know, there was a time in the 70s the 80s, 1968, 1966, these were winners. Of course, the Yankees always were winners, except in 1966. Well, you want to talk about Topsy Turvy year. But then, let me just play this here. This is how badly the Yankees demolished the Orioles yesterday 
at Camden Yards. Yeah, yeah. And this cracked at deep left field toward that wall, and it is gone! Another home run! A line also drive was... just got over the low wall down the left field line. Higashioka, the home run Stroka. And getting Higgy with it. He hits a two-run blast. How about Higgy? Two home runs and five RBIs, and the Yankees take a 14-1 lead. Memo to the Tennessee Lottery, as bad as that was by John Sterling, an 81-year-old man was able to rhyme better than you were, and for that matter, rap better than you were. I just want you to to know that, Tennessee Lottery. Okay, there you go. We, we love your money. We, you know, no, no, you know, please, stay. we just ask for your own sake of existence do not try to rhyme some, you know, what was, oh my goodness, that was, at least use words that rhyme. I mean, at least do that, you know? But regardless, there. Anyway, do you realize that that is the 15th straight victory for the New York Yankees against the Baltimore Orioles in Baltimore? Which is, you know, I mean, do you realize the Orioles as recently as 2016 made the playoffs? So did Toronto. There's a lack of competitive balance in baseball. It didn't used to be this way. Of course, I mentioned 79, and that was, you know, that was when free agency was in its infancy. And, you know, everybody thought they could afford uh, the player that they wanted. The salaries hadn't gone, you know, to the bidding wars, to all the big teams. So, see that. Uh, there have been, there's never been, has there been a Major League Baseball game played in Iowa? Well, there will be soon. Here, Matt Wolf with the story. If you build it, he will come. Sacred words there from Field of Dreams starring Kevin Costner and Ray Liotta. Now Major League Baseball making it a reality. The New York Yankees and the Chicago White Sox will play at the site of the film's original location. Is this heavy? No. Oh. Iowa. That would be Dyersville, Iowa. Now, they won't play on the actual field. That's preserved as a tourist attraction, but a regulation-sized ballpark is being built adjacent to it for the game, which happens on August 13th of 2020. People will come, Ray. Matt Wolf, ABC News. You get the idea. They're trying a little too hard. I mean, I don't know. You know, you can say, well, don't you like it when they play in Williamsport? It's all right. I just... Don't understand, I mean, you know, taking the date away from the loyal fans in your home. And I'm guessing that they're taking a game away from the White Sox here to go to Iowa. I'm guessing, I'm guessing. I don't think that they're taking one away from the Yankees next year. And I'm, uh, so th that is my thing. But, you know, the, the Raiders, Oakland Raiders, used to play at a temporary ballpark in Oakland before the Oakland Coliseum was built. They played there for about uh, four years. At one time, the Oakland Raiders played in San Francisco at, Car at Candlestick Park. But uh, how'd that work out? Yeah. Anyway, uh, this is one of the things that they've had struggling with identity of their city, I suppose, over the years and such. But regardless and all that. So anyway, yes, that sort of romantic Williamsport, now Field of Dreams, a temporary stadium, and I think it's just because the White Sox have trouble selling tickets for 81 games. Perfect pair.